going on guys it's Threadripper Jones here no it's Timmy Joe I'm just freaking excited about Thread Rippy my old pal two weeks me and him have been bro friends you know bromance going on mr. mr. Thread Rippy so this video I'm trying to stop these like vloggy ranty you know no meat and potatoes content videos but uh hell i have some things to say and i need your input so stick around because i want to hear back from y'all audience about what we should do with this particular uh pc named mr threadripper jones so threadripper jones here which i just uh realized that is definitely the name of this this pc is uh quite the beast and uh, i'm really really happy with it and i wanted to kind of go over a few things that uh, have come up along the way uh my experiences so far now that we're two weeks in as well as uh where we're going to be going with this and uh what its use case scenario is so uh let's let's go ahead and, and we'll talk so i have not been using this as my daily driver pc it is in here it's on my set and i don't like to sit here and video edit it because it's uncomfortable and i have a nice comfy chair downstairs with a ryzen 7 system that does a pretty dang good job at video editing however i have made the uh you know few, few, on, on occasion the attempt to sit here and video edit and when i do i'm very pleasantly surprised so um you know what if this was the intel 10 core uh, x299 i'd probably be just as ecstatic because uh once you get past uh any you know anything better than ryzen 7 you know 1700 1800 x or whatever uh you're really talking like way too many cores for the average guy like me to take advantage of even if i'm video editing even if i have a million chrome browsers open even if whatever you'd have to like really be doing some crazy stuff to get anywhere where near maxing a system out like this which is pretty dang cool that doesn't mean that i'm not going to keep using it and trying to you know figure out what its limitations are that is for sure so uh right off the hop very very good experiences video editing i will say i notice a difference between this in my Ryzen 7 uh, to where timeline scrubbing and uh, video effects seem to play rather instantly and I have 4k uh, I output my videos right now 1080p but I use 4k content whenever I can to crop in and zoom in and what have you. So uh, having that 4K file in my timeline, sometimes two or three of them, can be cumbersome on a machine even as good as the Ryzen 7 1700. And this takes it to a whole new level for sure. And render times are insane. Uh, I know that, you know, Jay just did a video, Jay's Two Cents, where he put pretty much any GPU uh, will help out only so much. Uh, it doesn't matter how good your GPU is, video editing and like end encoding isn't really going to benefit from much better than like even a, a low end like 1050 ti and uh the processor is really where it, it helps and when you encode on something like this it just it, it literally goes twice as fast as my ryzen 7 system that means i'm outputting a file quicker which is uh you know then i can edit review it make sure it's good and don't have you know issues where my audio is out of sync or something like that uh and it, that that will be a benefit i'm definitely going to be switching over to this for full-time video editing i think i'll actually start uh by putting this downstairs for a week and you know really hammering at it and then I'll come up with a solution to use it full time so um, yeah we, we've had a really good experience uh, gaming on it uh, I've only done a little bit of gaming on it uh, if I'm honest I want to get Vega in here before I really get the Vegas uh, or the, the, the gaming going I also have just a small NVMe drive in here right now uh, but I have put a few games on it and uh, I wanted to put Deus Ex Mankind Divided on here and I've had a hell of a time getting it to work even even with the cores splitting thing or the the game mode that Threadripper offers so uh, I'm still working on that that once that happened I haven't really uh, done much gaming on it but I definitely plan on maybe doing like uh, a month later once games have maybe done a few patches to incorporate you know uh, uh, support for Threadripper and uh, get a good list of games and do a, a video where it makes sense to do some benchmarks because there is a reason there's been updates there's been time you know Th Threadripper a month later 
here and what have you. So another really awesome benefit uh, over Ryzen 7 is, uh, of, of course, it's got tons of PCIe lanes. You're not going to have to worry about that. But uh, even subtler things like m the RAM I have in here is 3200 megahertz uh, Giel or Guile memory uh, DDR4 that uh, it, it's not the Ryzen labeled stuff. They make Ryzen specific stuff and I had some of that and it could overclock to 2933 and, and it was better. You could tell it was Samsung B-Die. This is definitely not Samsung B-Die RAM. When I put it in my Ryzen 7 downstairs, it hates it. I can barely get it to run at uh, 2666 megahertz and uh, it, it just, it's like a, I'm not having a good time. I put it in here, the XMP profile loads 3200 megahertz and it just blazes. It's blazing fast. It's awesome. So I'm supposed to be getting some other other RAM samples uh, to try in here too. Some Ryzen specific stuff that's like really fast and like 64 gigs to fill up every slot. But uh, there's been some delay at the border for that. Keep waiting for that. Another thing I'm waiting for though, and you'll be excited to hear. I just did the video where I tested the uh, the round uh, AIO coolers, the Asatec stuff versus Noctua's cooler here, which is like bang, doing a bang up job in here. And uh, I said in that video that I wanted to get the Enermax AIO cooler and put it through the ringer because it's supposed to have a cold plate that'll cover the whole die and be a much better solution. Even the fins inside are better designed for hitting all the cores of Threadripper. And guess what? It's in the freaking mail. I have a freaking uh, tracking number. So uh, it's happening sometime next week. So stick around for that stuff. As well as I have a power meter uh, that just arrived today that I got to go pick up at the post office. Then I'll be testing some out of the wall uh, wattage on Threadripper and of course on uh, Ve my Vega computer or the Vega card to see uh, you know just how many watts it's pulling out of the wall. So that's some pretty cool stuff. So all in all, very, very positive experience. The only real uh, problems I've had with this, and I'm not sure if it had to do with my overclock. I'm not sure what was going on, but it happened once well overclocked at 4.05 gigahertz, okay? I had, uh, and then I had it happen without it at stock speeds, and it hasn't happened since, but once while it was overclocked, I had, uh, I come in here, I'm like, why is it so damn warm in here? I've been maybe out of the garage for about an hour. I come over here, it's just blasting heat and it's unresponsive. Uh, the fans are blowing, so there's something going on in here. Uh, it's almost like it was running like at 8 to 64 or something. I hadn't, uh, it was it was idle when I had last left it and uh, it was just blowing heat out. So I turned it off immediately and it was so hot it wouldn't turn back on right away. So I let it cool down uh, and then tested it, it worked fine. And I'm like, what the hell happened? Like, why would it have locked up and put itself into some mode where it was like really blasting some heat? So uh, just to make sure, and I because I kind of wanted to test uh, Threadripper at stock for a while anyways, I set everything back to stock, just set the XMP profile. And then the next day it happened again where I walked in here and it was unresponsive. It had crashed. We're at default settings now, so it's nothing I did. And uh, it's just running in a continuous, you know, fan cycle uh, on high. But that time, it at least didn't have time to heat up, or I don't know what was happening. But uh, uh, that that was a few days ago, and it hasn't happened since. So I'm keeping my eye on that. I'm also keeping my eye open for any BIOS updates. There was one BIOS revision for this motherboard, but I'm, I'm waiting to see if there's another one because if there's little problems like that, I'd like to know if anyone else has had that experience. Uh, th that really scares me. Okay, and I thought it was overclocking. Well. It didn't seem to be overclocking the second time, that's for sure. Other than that though, it's just a blazing fast computer and uh, I have some awesome uh, things to tell you about. So we're gonna do the Intermax cooler. I'm gonna probably transfer all of my NVMe drives and stuff into here too eventually and use it as a full-time computer. But uh, we're gonna work very hard towards 20,000 subscribers okay and when we hit 20,000 subscribers I have been authorized to water cool the ever living out of this computer and or uh, depending on how quickly this happens depending on the situation uh, get another Vega 64 card and put crossfire into this thing. So when I hit 20,000 subscribers which may take uh, you know a few months, it may be quicker than that, depending on how hardcore and awesome you guys are. 
I am going to just blast the ever living out of this computer and uh, make it the most ultimate AMD fanboy machine ever. So I'll leave that in your guys' hands. What I'll do is uh, maybe put a straw poll up of what you guys would like to see. Uh, ch check it out here and we'll see what you guys want. If you want a water cooled crossfire first, or if I just need to go, you know, when I hit 20,000 real quick, balls to the walls and do everything at once. But eventually this will be a custom water cooled computer for sure. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to go with EK water blocks. We'll see if something different's out by the time we do it because they were rude to me. Uh, <laughs> But uh, anyways, uh, and you know, I'm not going to be butthurt about that, but uh, you know, I have Enermax and Noctua sending me coolers. How come EK can't send me a water block that probably cost them all of like, you know, $20 to ship and manufacture? Anyways, talking too freaking long. I'm like uh, OC3D here. Like I'm just talking for 35 minutes in front of my computer uh, with no real you know, active content or, or reasoning you know, around behind it. So all in all, the ending of this video will be a conclusion of uh, Threadripper's awesome, but of course it's awesome. I haven't had uh, really any issues. The RAM runs really, really well. You can overclock it uh, further than you'd imagine uh, the, the, the system itself. And once I get the Enermax cooler, I, I think it'll run 4.1 gigahertz stably all the time, which is super, super cool. But we'll see what happens then. And uh, there was a little issue with some thermal mode it got into where it was just blasting heat and the fans were rolling full speed but i haven't been able to reproduce it in a couple of days so hopefully we won't see that again and when i hit 20,000 subscribers we are going to make this the most awesome badass ultimate off the wall computer hell i'll even throw in an option in the straw poll here should i like uh mod this case in some way should i make it like red and black paint it maybe do something with the that front uh cover i'm not sure we're gonna do some crazy stuff with this computer anyways maybe even competition worthy or something like that anyways i will see you guys in another video check out the straw poll let me know what i should do with threadripper in the comments below help me get to 20,000 because when 20,000 happens this is going to be all kinds of cool and crazy and i really do appreciate you guys watching me rant and rave about these computer parts and things on the internet because uh, i have so much fun doing this type of stuff and you know the days where i'm locked into some you know project where i'm testing power supplies or i'm benchmarking video cards uh, that's a lot of fun for me and it usually is you know only doesn't stop being fun uh, when i have to turn around and edit the video in like a really quick fashion to get it on the internet or whatever but i'm having a lot of fun being a computer reviewer on the internet and uh, I enjoy all the fanboys calling me out all the time. It's, it's hilarious. I will see you guys in another video. This is James Corden signing out. This is Rutledge Wood signing out. And I will uh, see you all in another rantatious, delicious video.